Hey y'all, hey, and just like I told y'all, we are back. We are here for Love is Blind Season 3, Episode 9, The Last Supper. The episode starts out with um, Nancy and Bartice going to some jewelry shop where they get these, uh, I would say an infinity bracelet. Um, they both, they pick out the type they like and the person melts the bracelet onto their wrist. So it's not something you can clasp and turn, um, open and take off and on. It's on forever. And he was like, yep, it's not like I wasn't going to say I do down the aisle, but this definitely signifies that I'm in this for the long haul. Then we see Brennan and Alexa at her dad's, um, with her dad and her grandfather. And he's there to learn more about the Jewish faith, um, conversion. And what's going to happen during the wedding ceremony. So the first thing he um he mentions is that um, the yarmulke. The yarmulke, he, gave, he gives, he puts one on his head, he gives Brendan one. He said the yarmulke um, is one on the head um, to signify that God is always watching. He's over us. God is over, always over us. Then um, they mention he mentions um, about uh, Alexis' mother converting to Judaism and stuff like that too. So then we see this book, and it has their names on it. He, I think he said this is called Katuda. This piece of paper. And basically, it's like a prenup, and it's a contract that he's going to sign, that Brennan has to sign. That's basically saying that, you know, in the event of a divorce, he will always take care take care of and provide for Alexa and any children that they have for the rest of her life. And that's, you know, keeping a roof over their head, making sure they have food and stuff like that. So he was like, okay, and the grandfather was like, it's real serious, eh? It's real serious. And um, Alexa said something about grandfather is ready for her to have kids now. And he was like, yeah, I want to be great, 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 great grandfather. And she was like, my dad, he's he's feeling like we can hold off for a few years. But my grandfather is definitely ready for me to have a baby. And the grandfather's making jokes and things like that. The father brings up the arch. And the arch symbolizes the home. It symbolizes something about their home, I believe. But I can't recall exactly what he said in the moment. And then he also said uh, another part of it is the veil. The veil that covers you. And the veil is meant because you're supposed to love her for her inner beauty and not her outer beauty. And I think she was like, oh, am I more beautiful on the inside or the outside? And Brennan is looking like, mm, he thinking the grandfather volunteers the outside. And she starts to laugh and she gives, she flips her grandfather and her father the bird. I'm like, oh, that's different. Now, I've gotten to an age where I do curse in front of my mother. And I started cursing in front of my mom maybe like two or three years ago. I never cursed in front of her at first. Unless I was like really mad, angry. But now it just flows, but I would never flip her the bird. Like, there's some, she still has some hard stops. Like, you better not even think about it. But anyway, and then he goes on to talk about the other tradition of, you know, breaking the glass and what that symbolizes and means. And Brennan is just sitting there taking it, taking it all in. Cole and Zay have a dance lesson. They discuss with the instructor the type of dance that they might want to do for their first dance at their um, wedding reception. And he shows them um, something and suggests the type of ballroom dance that they should do. Um, based on what they're looking for and their personalities and stuff like that. So afterwards, um, Zay and Cole sit down. And... She gets a sad look on her face and she lets him know that this was really fun. But this just brought back the fact that her father is not there for her. 
to um, have a father-daughter dance for her at her wedding. And she's going to be hit with these kinds of emotions at every major milestone that you normally have your parents at. Um, Cole does what he can to come for her, um, to try to bring a smile to her face and let her know that he is in it, that he really loves her and, um, that no matter what, he's always going to be there for her to create new memories and things like that. So then we see, um, we see Matt and Colleen. They're at home at their apartment, and they, um, they're talking about, you know, how far they've come, how things have been going thus far since they picked up dresses, and, you know, with the fact that the wedding is coming up. So then we hear a knock at the door. It's her parents. Oh. Excuse me. Her parents come in. They sit down to dinner. The mom says, you know, he's really cute, Colleen. And so they get to talking about their experience in the pods. The mom wants, you know, she has questions about um, do they feel like they connected better f by not seeing each other first? And you know about the whole process. She lets Matt know that this is the first time they've met somebody. Um, because she's never gone deep and had a deep relationship with anybody. So she's never brought anybody home to meet to them. Um, excuse me. Oh, mm mm mm. She go, Colleen goes on to say that, you know, they've had their ups and downs in this um, short time frame. They worked through some issues and stuff like that. But she really does feel like Matt is the one. And she says the reasons why she feels like he's the one. So then, at some point, the parents um, tell Matt that um, Colleen is a person who does not open up and share her feelings. She's very guarded and very private. Even, um, she, you know, she. it doesn't mean that she doesn't feel or have feelings. It's just the fact that she's super, super guarded. And she's not used to expressing her feelings or sharing her feelings with anybody. And um, they let him know. like, well, she, And she definitely didn't get that from us because we're very open with each other. And we share our feelings with one another. So... He's like, cool. He excuses himself from the room. And him and Colleen, her parents, continue to talk. She asks her dad what he thinks. And the father is like, I'm, my concern is, is he going to do right by you? Is he going to take care of you? The mom is like, listen. I'm by your side, whatever decision you make. I think he's a good fit for you. I think he's a really nice guy. He's super cute. And it, you guys look good together. And it does seem like he really does care. And he loves you for who you are genuinely on the inside. But whatever you decide, it's up to you. But I'm sticking beside you, no matter what. Then we see... Raven and FK have a date on a gondola. And it looks like they're riding past the same apartment building that they live in. I can see the bridge that looks just like the same bridge that Cole and Zay put their lock on and everything. I said, so y'all just filmed everything in this one neighborhood. I thought Dallas was a big enough city where you can switch out and go different places. These skills are good. But, um, I forgot to mention in the last review that last conversation that they were having before the episode went off. They were having differences, major differences, about the role and the importance of family. 
inside your marriage. Ravens, of course, her opinion is the marriage is between us. We don't need no outside noise and people and you know putting input into our marriage like that. Whereas SK is like family is very important. And his family is gonna be very much involved in his marriage. So they headed out about that and they discussed that while they on this gondola ride. They talk about how much they love each other. And you feel like they worked through the last argument. And then Raven is like letting him know that, you know, she is concerned with the fact that soon as they get married, he's going to leave and go to California for grad school. And, um, <clears throat> you know, that's going to be an issue. But she would never want to hold him back from her his dreams. And he was like, yeah, and I don't want to do the same for you. So whatever it is that you want to do, you know, I'm in full support of it. And she's like, okay, cool. So she kind of like asked him, where does he see them in the future? So he goes on to say, they're going to have a great marriage. You see them having a lot of money in the future. Living their best lives. He really likes that. They bring out. A different side of each other. And they balance each other out. With their personalities. He likes that. She's super serious and on task about things. But that she does find room. To find the joke and the humor in things too. So she can have a good time when it's needed. Um, she was saying, that, you know, for her future, it's like she can see them being together and being happy. But of course, the whole family thing is still a concern, and the fact that he's going to be in California. So we'll see y'all. Are they going to make it down the aisle? Or are they going to say yay or nay to each other when they get down here? So, Matt and Colleen are on a very beautiful date at the aquarium. They have a table set up for them to have dinner in front of the tanks. It's really, it's really pic picturesque. It's pretty. They sit there. He tried to do the romantic thing and have flowers and stuff. And she said she noticed his effort. So then he also states, like, I noticed your effort in trying to make this relationship work. And me doing this, setting this up, is um me trying to show you that I'm trying to put the effort in and match your effort in trying to make this relationship work. And all the hiccups that we've had, it was me being emotional. And you still fought through it to let me know that you wanted to be with me and stuff, man. You know, I want to say thank you for that and to show my appreciation. I did this. I set up this date. So she was like, okay, thanks. So um, he then asked her. So after everything, how are you feeling? Like, do you feel like you're going to say yes on decision day? You're going to say yes to marrying me. You're going to say I do. She hems hawes, beats around the bush, answers and says she loves him without saying she's going to say yes. And he's like, listen, Colleen, just say it. Give me an answer. No matter what the answer is, just say it. Please, don't beat around the bush. Don't play these games. Just say it. And she just was like, at this point, I don't know. I don't know. And he's like, like I can understand that because of how I've been towards you and looking for an out and all those things like that. But at this moment, I'm really, really in it. And if you aren't in it with me, it's no point, basically. So once again, he's wanting her to just give him a definitive yes or a no. And 
after much prodding, she finally says, you know, no, I wouldn't say yes at this moment. Nope, it would be enough. Zay and Cole are also having a date on a boat. He says a really nice prayer over the food, thanking God for his blessings and having a meet Zay and them to be on his journey together. And then they look towards each other after he closes out the prayer and he expresses how much he really does love her. And um, he asks for a kiss. She has this very, very pretty lipstick on. He asks for a kiss. Some of the lipstick rubs off on it, transfers onto his lips. And she says something like, you know, you're going to make the lipstick mess up. It's going to be more and more coming off of you. So next thing you know, we see her without lipstick, which means she's wiped it off. And she's expressing that, you know, day by day, more and more, she sees him as husband material. And not just fiance and boyfriend material. She's falling more and more in love with him as the days go on. They are fighting less and they are communicating better. And growing closer toward one another. Excuse me. <clears throat> he agrees that they are getting closer. And he finds himself loving her even more by the day as well. Um, They kiss. And she says to him that she can really, you know, that she's in this. And they're going to say yes and I do to each other when it comes down to it on that day. And then we see the sign that says we're two days out from the weddings. Why are they shooting? Can y'all hear it? Did the Ravens play today? Did the Ravens play the Steelers today? Or whoever they were supposed to play? Is that why they're shooting? But it's only 7.38. Would a game be this early? Hmm. But anyway, I, I came back to say, I forgot to mention the fact that uh, Cole told Zay that at this moment he's so in love with her that he will repropose to her. Like, after all they've been through, he would still... He would propose all over again to her. So we see Brennan and Alexa taking a ride on his Harley Davidson Roadster. They ride past a theater with a marquee that says a love story for the Lemos. I think that's Lemurs or Lemos. Um, and then the other side of the marquee says Alexa and Brennan. Then we see them both having dinner inside of the of this same theater, I believe. And as they sit down to eat, the screen comes on and they replay their love journey on the show is playing while they're sitting there talking. And Brennan lets us know, as well as Alexa, that you know he really, really loves her and um he's really excited. And she says she is too, but, um, you know, if somebody would have told her that she would go on this journey and really be saying yes to marrying somebody after no, getting to know them for nine or ten days without seeing them, she wouldn't believe it. But she loves him, and she wants to do this. Um, he has a confessional where he says that uh, he just really wants her to be happy, and he hopes that her source of happiness would come from, you know, being in a marriage with him. And if that isn't the answer for her, then of course it'd be sad. But he just ultimately, he just want her to be happy. He never thought, he expresses that he never thought that he was going to meet a woman. That gets his sense of humor and really gets him and digs him and still wants to be with him and to get to know him. And she laughs. He was like, so how sure are you about it? On a scale of 1 to 10, are you like 80-something? And she was like, no, I'm only 64% playing. She was joke. She laughed it off like it was a joke, so I'm going to assume she was joking. And that she's more on about the 80, 90-something part of the spectrum. 
and saying yes to Brennan on their wedding day. Nancy and Bart are having a romantic dinner um, by the window of some building. We can see views of other buildings outside. It's just like windows all around. Nancy has never eaten ribs. So, Bart takes a piece of meat, puts it in a fork, and hands it to her. Let's her taste it. She's saying it's really good. So, he expresses that, you know, it really scared him when she expressed to him that she didn't feel loved by him. And it made him do a self-check and an evaluation and pivot and do what he needs to do to show his intentions, to execute his intentions toward her. He made mention of the fact that his mom always said, your dad is a man with very good intentions. And that was it, which means to him, he doesn't want to be like his dad. He doesn't want to only have good intentions. He wants to execute them. And that's what he's been trying to do as far as his relationship with Nancy is concerned. She lets him know that she's noticed that he's, you know, turned or turned things around and been making the effort to show her um, emotional and physical love and affection and stuff like that or whatever that he's trying to make it work. And she lets him know, you know, because I came to this process, I didn't just want to fall in some love with somebody. I realized I want you as a, as my man. Like, I want you to be my husband. That really touches a nerve with him. And he's like, thank you for saying that. You can tell he got a little bit emotional about what, what she said. They kiss. And um, Nancy is so cute. And they do. They do look very good together, I must say. They look really nice in their blue outfits right now. And they just, to me, they look good together. Um, I'm really hoping that they both say yes and they really, and they can last. Because it's one thing to just say yes on this show. It's another to keep putting in the work and doing the work to make the marriage last for a long term. Because like we all know, just before this show premiered, um, one of the couples from season two announced that they were getting a divorce, which was... Uh, Jerry and Ayana, even though I saw that happening anyway, because I just felt like Ayana really wasn't emotionally available and sure about whether or not she wanted to marry Jerry. Because one thing was for sure is that she was she was his second choice. I mean, I know she had issue with being the second choice, but she forged ahead regardless, which she shouldn't have. And so. We're ending episode now with Zay and Cole. Cole is in the apartment preparing dinner for he and Zay's last night together before they say I do. She walks in, takes a look at things, and the way he's doing to prepare the meal is not up to her liking, I guess. So she comes in and volunteers to help and starts to do things. And then it's like, but you're supposed to be cooking for me, not the other way around. And um, she makes mention that the chicken is under seasoned, <laughs> like it's like white with no seasoning or anything on it. Um, she goes to put broccoli in the microwave, and it's Nerf gun bullets in the microwave in a bag. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I forgot to show you this." And he goes and get the gun out the closet and shoots at her while. She's in front of the stove per fixing the chicken. Like, that was super, super immature. She's like, Cole, like. So, they finish fixing the meal. They sit down to eat. They get to talking. Cole asks her, is she really going to say yes to him? Because... He feels like she talks down to him every day. She finds something to nag about every day. Something he isn't doing to her liking every day. And that he can't be perfect. So she was like, I don't know what I'm going to say. She was like, if I had to base it off of the pause in the last two weeks together, I'm definitely 100% yes. I'm saying yes. He was like, 
you're saying yes. I mean, even after all of this, you're saying yes. And right now, to me, it's giving. He's fishing for an out because he doesn't want to say yes. So he goes on and on and on to her. You pick up, you pick me apart, basically. And how can you want to say yes to somebody that you keep picking apart? You said I was immature. You said I didn't cook well. Um, like it's always something. And then he has the nerve to come up with, "Are you bipolar?" Because he make mention of the fact that. He doesn't know what he's getting day to day with her. One day she's happy, super go lucky, and then the next day she's serious and you know, not feeling it. And he just wants a nice girl who's unassuming, that's going to be happy go lucky every day, and not have days where she's wondering what's going on, what her feelings are, and all those things like that. She said, "Cole, have you met any women? Because all women can be like this at some point." And, um, of course, she's taken aback by the question of, are you bipolar? And she responds, well, I am not bipolar. But, are you projecting? Are you projecting your insecurities, your issues, and everything that you're feeling? Are you projecting it on me? And with that, she gets up. She was like, I'm not. He was like, because you can't fully say that you're going to. Why would you marry somebody like me? Like, she said, we have a good connection. I love you. And I know marriage is not easy, but you are the person I want to do the hard stuff with. But if I'm not the girl for you, stop doing whatever it is that you're doing right now, what this is. And go out there and go find the person that you really want to be with. That you want to do life with. And keep me out of it. And with that, she grabs her things and she heads out. And the episode goes off. So I'm guessing the next episode is when the weddings will start. So we're going to get into that. Um, maybe I might watch it and we're good tonight. Maybe I won't. Mm-hmm. But Lord have mercy. It's been a roller coaster ride. I'm not sure how much of this is scripted or putting on to make a good show. And how much of it is genuine. I'm lost now. I have no idea. Do you have any ideas? Do y'all? If you do, get in the comments and let me know. And with that, I'll see y'all in episode 10. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons. Get in the comments. Tell me what you feel about this episode. And how the season going so far. I'll see y'all in episode 10 when I come back. Peace out, y'all.